Shane Wiskus leads the all-around ahead of Yul Muldaur, Paul Judah withdrew from the competition, and Kern Phillips is in first on parallel bars by almost a point, and so much more from Winter Cup. This is the Neutral Deductions Podcast. Men's gymnastic news, coverage, and analysis. Hosted by Kinsley Beal. For those new here, my name is Kinsley. I'm the host of Neutral Deductions, a podcast all about men's gymnastics. Today will be a recap of everything that happened in day one of the Winter Cup competition. So for those of you who have been around men's gymnastics for any amount of time, you know that Winter Cup has in past years been a complete and total splat fest. It's really early in the season. A lot of times athletes are coming, bringing up upgrades, trying new things, and it doesn't end up being a clean competition. And to be honest, this competition started out like it would be one of those meets. Paul Judah, world team member, scratched from the first get-go. We were like, what happened? He was supposed to go first up on vault. We look up and all of a sudden Landon Blix is on vault. So we turn around and Brett McClure, who is the high program, high performance program director, confirmed to us, yes, he has scratched from the meet, but there's no word as to why. And we still haven't had an update as to why he has scratched from the meet. So his teammate, Landon Blix, goes and he starts to run down towards the vault. And instead of doing his normal vault, he just does a timer, which is, for those of you not familiar with gymnastics terms, just sort of like a warm up vault. And that was his vault. And I was like, oh no, this is not going to go well. But then 2021 world champion Steven Adarasa gets up on pommel horse. He hits immediately for a 15.250, an incredible routine. Now, really interestingly, ahead of the competition, I had an opportunity to speak to his coach, Sykes Caesar, and he said, Steven's going to do a routine that starts from a 6.5, a 6.6, a 6.7, or a 6.8. It just sort of depends on what his first skill is. And so Steven went up and he went to go do his G flop skill, but he said he felt a little bit off and he only went for one Russian around. So he ended up going for the 6.5 D score, but he hid. And he's in first with a 15.25, many, many tenths of a point ahead of second place. Now, we also saw the return of Brody Malone on the national stage to this competition. So Brody Malone is the 2022 World High Bar Champion. He has been training at Evo alongside Steven Nederosik. We found out in interviews yesterday that he is going to be returning to the all-around competition at the national championships. Now, he's probably going to be doing watered-down vaults and watered-down floor routines, but he is expected to be competing on all six events, which is really exciting. So Brody got up. He did his pommel horse routine, and it went fairly well. It's definitely a strong score something that could be used in a world or Olympic team scenario if needed. Some other highlights from the night, uh, Cam Nelson of Ohio State, he is one of two gymnasts who ended up putting up two vaults. So at international competition, you do need to have two vaults from two different families to compete in the vault final. And the U.S. has recently adopted the same policy. So the only two people to do two vaults tonight were Cameron Nelson from Ohio State and Connor McCool from Illinois. And Cameron Nelson rocked his vault. I believe his first vault was a Randy, but I didn't actually see the entrance to it. I just got to see the landing, which was really good. And then his second vault was a handspring double front, which he also landed very well. And he sits in first on that event. Now, later on in vault, Colin Flores from Oklahoma went to go do his vault, and his vault just looked a little bit off from the beginning, and unfortunately, when he landed, he immediately grabbed his knee. Um, There's been no confirmation to what that injury is. However, it did look very similar to many ACL tears that we see, and we will certainly wait from Oklahoma um, to see what his diagnosis will be. One of the absolute highlights of the meet for me was Karen Phillips on parallel bars. He, we know that he is one of the best parallel bar workers in the world, but last year he really struggled with some consistency issues. And this is something that he was asked about in the media zone yesterday about what have you done to sort of make sure that you can be more consistent. And he had a really amazing answer, which you can go see up on our YouTube channel. He talked about how he was overthinking his performances too much, and he really feels like he's in a good rhythm. And of course, winning the Pan American Games title really helped boost his confidence as well. So he came in and got a 15.950, which is almost a full point higher than Yul Muldaur. And Yul Muldaur is no slouch on parallel bars. He got a great score. He got a 15. He was in the world final last year, but for someone to score almost a point higher than the next best gymnast, someone who is also very good on that event. This is someone who could be in the running for that Olympic title in Paris. Now, interestingly, I was also watching the broadcast while being live in the arena because you see different things and you get different feedback. And so 
high performance director Brett McClure said that Kern Phillips has a triple twisting Yurchenko in the works, ready to be competed maybe at the national championships. And based on the results of the world team last year, so they took a team of all all all-arounders and they got their first world medal in nine years, I really thought okay, I think that they're probably going to go with a team of all all all-arounders again. But after seeing Curran's parallel bar routine, knowing that he has a triple twisting Yurchenko, which is a 5-6 difficulty vault, and that's really, really going to be key for challenging Great Britain for that bronze medal spot because they are a team of exceptional vaulters, and seeing that Curran got the highest score in the nation on high bar as well, things are looking really, really good for him. Neutral Deductions is your exclusive gymnastics news platform focused entirely on men's gymnastics. To show your support, please subscribe to Neutral Deductions' YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. So we've talked about a couple of the highlights here. I want to go for the consistency. So Cameron Bach and Shane Wiskus really impressed me today. They were both just sort of silently, you know, going through the meet and hitting one event after the other after the other. And for me, Shane specifically, we didn't really know where he was going to be. He was supposed to be competing at the Pan American Games. He pulled out with a little bit of a back issue and no one really knew how he was going to perform. And now he sits atop of the all around standings ahead of Yul Moldauer. And it's really interesting because after the fifth event, Shane was in first, but not by very much. And Yul Moldauer was going to vault and Shane was going to floor. And vault is typically a much more... Um, consistent scoring event and I thought that Yule would have the edge heading to vault so he goes to vault he sticks his vault and I'm like oh Yule's going to be leading after night one but Shane put on a huge performance on floor and ended up taking the lead after night one now, speaking about floor, Yul Moldauer has for years opened his routine with a front somersault stretched out with two and a half twist. But today he opened with a full twisting double layout, which was really great to see. Um, a few other highlights, Riley Luce stuck his vault. He looked great there. So another little uh, interesting tidbit of something that happened today. So we knew going in that Pummel Horse was going to be a great competition. We were really excited for the showdown between Steven Edorosik, Ignacio Yockers, Brandon Ding, and Patty Hoops. And so I was watching these scores pretty heavily, and I noticed that Ignacio Yockers had a 3 tenth neutral deduction, and I wasn't really sure what happened. So I had the chance to talk to his coach, Mark Williams, afterward to sort of understand what was going on. And it seems that Ignacio Yockers was looking at the judges for one of the head judge to raise his hand, and that never happened. Now, the way it works here at the Winter Cup is there are these boards that have a green light to signal for the gymnast to go. But one of the main problems with them is there isn't actually a countdown timer on them. Now, a world championships, you do have a countdown timer, so you know how long ago that the green light went on. But with the boards here, you have no idea if the green light went on one second ago or 28 seconds ago. And so it just seems that this was an administrative error that should have been corrected on an from numerous angles. One, the board should definitely have a timer on it. And two, the judge should have raised his hand to signal to the gymnast, hey, if you're looking at me, like, let's go. Now, the judge didn't technically do anything wrong. There is nothing wrong with how the judge approached it. However, it does seem that between the two signals, someone should have been able to appropriately signal the athlete, hey, it's time to go and your time is running out. So I hope that that's something that can be rectified for day two. Neutral Deductions recently launched this year and is entirely funded by listener contributions. If you'd like to support the show and help promote men's gymnastics, kindly consider making a donation through the PayPal link provided in the show notes. All donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you. So I know that I went over this in a previous podcast, but I do want to reiterate how the athletes are going to end up making the senior national team. So nothing is going to have been decided from today. I'm going to give you a couple scenarios of what it would have looked like if it was decided today, but I will reiterate, no national team spots are being named after day one of competition. So after the two days of competition, the top five in the all around, not already pre-qualified to winter cup are going to be named to national team. So that will be, as of today, top five, excluding Yule 
Moldauer. Then they will take the next five people from the 10 point program. The way the 10 point program works is if you are in first place day one, you get 11 points, second place is 10, third place is nine, then it jumps, fourth place is seven, and then all the way down until you get to one point. And so that will start over on day two, and then the two days will be added together. Then if someone like Kern Phillips or Steven Adorosik haven't earned their spot onto the national team from the, t- the 10 point program, they potentially have the opportunity to earn a spot via the event specialist route. And the way the event specialist route has to work is you have to win the event and you have to have a pre-prescribed D score that would have made the finals of the 2023 World Gymnastics Championships. So if that happens, then those two athletes would be named. Now, if there are more than two athletes, then it gets sent to discretionary selection. Another little caveat here is if either Josh Carnes or Landon Blix ends up making the senior national team outright, one of their spots will be reallocated to someone who is 18 to 20 with the highest D score. So these are people like Ian Sandoval, Kai Umira, and so on and so forth. Just for funsies, we're gonna take a look at what that would have looked like today. So the top five in the all around, excluding pre-qualified people would have been Shane Wiskus, Cameron Bach, Taylor Christopoulos, Riley Luce, and Donnell Wittenberg. Then, assuming I have done the 10-point program correctly, the next five people, according to the points, would have been Curran Phillips, Taylor Burkhart, Brody Malone, Javier Alfonso, and Jeremy Bischoff. Again, that is definitely not official. It's something that I did very quickly with math. So assuming my math is correct, that's Curran Phillips, Taylor Burkhart, Brody Malone, Javier Alfonso, and Jeremy Bischoff. If you want to follow along for day two, we are live blogging over at neutraldeductions.com. We have all of the interviews with the athletes up at YouTube. You can follow us at Neutral Deductions. We're also on Instagram at Neutral Deductions. And I am on Twitter at Kensley Ann. That's A-N-N-E. E. A quick update on what happened at the Coppice World Cup in Germany. So Asher Hong, Koi Young, and Colt Walker ended up competing these past two days, and only Koi Young will be moving on to the finals of the Americans. Koi Young is interestingly going to be moving on to the Parallel Bars final and not the Pommel Horse final. We have received another five-star review for our podcast, and it says, great for all fans. Kensley's podcast is fantastic. She does a great job summarizing the most recent happenings in men's gymnastics and explaining things for the beginner or novice fan. She also has great insights for those that are more in the know. I look forward to it every week. Thank you so much for that review. If you would please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast, it helps others find neutral deductions and learn more about men's gymnastics. If you would like to help bring more live men's gymnastics coverage, please consider donating. We are entirely listener supported at this point. Even $10 helps us cover a meal. We have recently received about $1,400 total for the year in donations. We're looking for about another 300 in donations to help co- finish covering winter cups. So if you would like to donate, we have links via Patreon. PayPal, and Stripe. If you have questions, comments, or insider tips, you can email us at neutraldeductions at gmail.com. That's all for today. We will see you back on Sunday evening to recap everything that happened on Winter Cup Day 2.